talking about the Leafs being in first place a lot. Like, you've been really laying it on thick. In, in the wake of their recent struggles, I was just wondering if you had any regrets. Mm, no. Let's go! Why not? The Toronto Maple Leafs! I guess my brand is a yell and scream. Ah, I don't script these. Are the Leafs all right? So what you get is from the heart. Welcome to LFR. Leafs lose 5-2 to two to the Winnipeg Jets. <sighs> that whole series. They outchanced the Jets 22-6 to six in the first game. They were even better in the second one and needed overtime to win that. And then there was this one. Clearly the worst game of the series. And you can definitely argue maybe the Leafs deserved a better result. No! 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 The Leafs are never gonna get anywhere unless the goalposts are a square. We gotta stop moving them. They've been talking about winning habits and they didn't have winning habits in this one. So they lost! That's how it works. So, this video, I wanna make it a little different. I wanna make it a little different because the Leafs are going through a slump that they haven't really gone through yet this season. And also, daylight savings time and the Leafs play tonight. It's awful. It's a terrible setup. That stupid little groundhog gets to tell us six weeks here or there. Well, why not? H how about this? If the Leafs lose on daylight savings time day, then it's not daylight savings time. It gets moved. How am I supposed to cope with all this? Because my favorite hockey team lost. I'm losing an hour of sleep. If it's not sunny outside, my days are right on. Well, you're lucky it's sunny today. You better thank the sun. So listen, the Leafs Sens game is only in a few hours. Let's do a questions heavy video, but first a quick recap of the game. Because if you've been watching and going, where the heck is my question? Well, it's, it's, odds are I'm still not going to get to it this one. But I'm going to try harder this time, and that's the point. All you can do is try harder. Winning habits! So first period, there are no goals that count, but it sends us into a paradox. Because Pierre Engvall, with a water bottle destroying snipe, past Laurent Brassois, who got the start for the Jets in this game, and the Leafs are up 1-0, which is great, except Engvall scored, so it's a guaranteed loss! I looked this up the other day for giggles, and I couldn't believe it. Out of pure dumb curiosity, I wanted to know in Pierre Engvall's last goal in a win was two goals in two different games this season. Nope. February 22nd, 2020. Nope. That was the David Ayers game. January 6th, 2020. Nope. That was the game where McDavid dangled Riley out of his jock. Answer, January 4th, 2020 in a 3-0 shutout of the Islanders. Michael Hutchinson with the shutout in that one. But here is the paradox they call the goal back because of a hand pass in a review that I didn't know you were able to do, but apparently you can. Again, new fans have no shot at understanding the sport. None. A lot of people are like, why are there some sports fans who all they know about hockey is fighting? Because it's the easiest thing to understand. That guy doesn't like that guy, so both those guys are gonna fight. Got it. Yeah, I get that. And then they're gonna congratulate each other because sportsmanship. Whoa. Oh, goal was scored. Hey, that's exciting, right? Well, no. Now wait. Ah well, all I know is Pierre Engvall didn't score, which I think means the Leafs are allowed to win this game now? Let's ask the second period. Jets 2 on 1, Mason Appleton scores less than 2 minutes into the frame. Ah yes. Travis Dermott has not had a nice few games, and we're gonna talk about him, but he gets stuck in the neutral zone trying to attack his man. Which actually might have gone okay if one of Jason Spezza or Travis Boyd figured out what was going on, and they didn't. Travis Boyd's chasing the puck carrier while Jason Spezza is just kind of having a casual glide in his own zone. He's not a lazy player. He's obviously a vet in this league, but he didn't know the guy was there. He scores, now you're down. Bogosian slashing penalty. Boy, that sure seems to be creeping up a little bit more. But on the penalty kill, despite the Leafs' recent struggles as a team, Mitch Marner has been playing some fantastic hockey. Nice break up in his own zone. The Leafs go the other way with like a three-on-one shorthanded. That's a good idea. Well, turns out, yes it is. Gives it to Jake Muzzin. Snipes! For a guy with over 600 games in the NHL, that's Jake Muzzin's first career shorthanded goal, and the Leafs' first shorthanded goal of the season despite having 50 thousand chances we got a tie game. Not long after, did you see the headline about Joe Thornton? Ah, oh, there is growing concern about where he fits in the lineup. Yeah? For who? He wins a nice battle at the Jets' blue line. William Nylander and John Tavares in on a two-on-one. Willie Snipes! The Willie Styles connection connects for a goal and the Leafs have a lead. Look at John and Willie. That is the face of a man who's gonna build so many shelves later. And now the Leafs. <laughs> have the lead. Tavares sounds nothing like that, but I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> now, here's the problem. Over the Leafs' struggles of late, they've had the lead in almost every game? Holding onto it has been the problem. Jet shot from the point, Paul Stastny tips it in because he's just got free reign to the front of the net and it's a tie game. And much earlier in this play, Muzzin having trouble corralling the puck and it's on the ice and oh, I cannot wait 
until he's got that bubble off his head. I know he feels the same too. And he scored earlier in this game, but defensively, he hasn't been the same. We head to the third, it falls apart. Jets put the puck behind the Leafs net. Freddie tries to do something with his stick. It does not help. Which leads to this situation, which seems like a bad one. And I've seen a lot of people go, well, I have a hard time blaming Freddie because the defense in front of him has been so bad. And you're right, but if you look at how that situation started, Freddy! Lowry gets a pass in front, bang, 3-2 Jets lead. Then where the controversy starts. Morgan Riley and his interference call on Nikolai Ehlers. So what happens? The Jets flip the puck out into the air. Nikolai Ehlers skating after it and Morgan Riley defending. Riley knocks Ehlers down, there's the interference call. Now, it's kind of interference, guys. I think Riley certainly got what he wanted. Like, he doesn't want Nikolai Ehlers blowing by him. He's been the best Jet outside of Connor Hellebuck in this three-game series. He's been terrifying. That being said, leading up to contact with Riley, Ehlers is looking, like, in the air and behind him. He's looking for the puck. He doesn't... He's not looking where he's going. And for a guy who has made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos about hockey, and if you've been watching the last few years, you know I almost never say this, that's a dive. So even though the Riley infraction isn't the most egregious thing in the world, I, I get why it's interference. A hundred percent. You make that call. It's a dive too. Embellishment, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty sure the Leafs have only gotten one embellishment call this season and it was on Hyman. And I, I, it was at least as egregious as that. And this was the problem with the end of the game is the rules are as clear as mud. Think the past few weeks. The Leafs played a penalty filled affair against the Calgary Flames. I think they played two games and split something like 20 power plays. Then they go right into a series against the Oilers and in two of those three games the Leafs don't take a single penalty. Teams in the American divisions are complaining about checks from behind and slew foot. No one, forget new fans. I've been talking about new fans not understanding the rules. Players in the National Hockey League have no idea. They have to guess on a night in and night out basis. That's why they're so frustrated. And who scores on that ensuing power play? Ehlers, of course. Just a clean shot that beats him. Wheeler screen in front and now it's a two goal lead late. And Hyman off the face off interference call. Sheldon Keefe pulls his mask down, I'm uncomfortable, and for all the lip readers out there, uh, minus a few expletives, he said, that happens 50 times a game! Boy, it's a tough one. That's another one where I'm like, all right, I guess I see why it was called, but also it happens 50 times a game. What if neither the ref or Keefe are wrong here? What if, yeah, it's kind of interference, but also it happens 50 times a game? But what I didn't like, and the next day I like to think I'm gonna get more of you on my side here, I don't know, is Keefe going the extra level with the ref, where he goes F you Graham, because I guess the ref's name is Graham. That gets him the extra penalty, and now the game's done. My coworker, Kevin Bieksa, after the game, gets on there and goes, you know what, uh, the game's done at that point. You're down a couple goals, the game's done. I vehemently disagree. There were over four minutes left in this game. The Leafs already had a shorthanded goal in this game, and even if they don't get one, they would still then have over two minutes left in the game to score or two goals. We've seen them do it. Since when do you stop trying to win hockey games? What? Now we see coaches yell at refs all the time, but my first thought whenever I see it is, wow, I'm surprised he's not getting called. Keith did. What do you want him to do? He's saying F you Graham on national TV. The guy's name is Graham and he's pulling his mask down to do it, which probably adds into it a little bit this year. And even if it doesn't, he's saying F you Graham. Shifley scores on the five on three. Okay, now it's done. Now it's dead. And that's the final of that. James Myrtle's Twitter was full of all kinds of happy-go-lucky stuff after the game. High danger chances at even strength were 14 to 3 for Winnipeg and the Leafs only 35% of expected goals. Might have been their worst game of the year. Yeah, definitely a far cry from the first two games against the Jets. The Leafs completely outclassed in this one. Frederick Anderson on his performance tonight, not good enough to win. Yikes. Morgan Riley says the Leafs are not overly proud of this recent stretch of games. Calls tomorrow, that's today against the Sens, a huge game. Yikes. Keith saying I thought we had a real hard time stringing together two passes tonight. Big yikes times three. And then Sheldon Keith one more time. I didn't think anybody had a good game for us tonight. Yikes on bikes. Yikes. Questions? Let's start with the Jets fan. He's into it. What's your assessment on the Jets this year? Are they a D-man away from being a contender? Are they damned by their system? Who stood out to you uh, most these past few games? Well, I mean this as an insult and compliment. Uh, they've reminded me a lot of the Randy Carlisle Leafs. The, the good ones though, because yes, they're getting outshot, not in this game, but mostly they're getting outshot, mostly they're getting out chance. They're relying on spectacular goaltending and a high shooting percentage, but Randy Carlisle's Leafs did things to 
deserve a high shooting percentage. They were great in transition, they got a lot of odd man rushes, and they had guys who can shoot. That's the Jets. Their best skater was easily Nikolai Ehlers. Their defense doesn't scare me at all. Pionk gets a ton of points where I look at the score sheet and I go, I I'm sorry, I gotta watch the replay again. What did he do? And Connor Hellebuck is obviously all world. Are they a defenseman away from being a contender? Well, I mean, when you get goaltending like that, you have a chance to win. I think there's a difference between being a contender and having a chance to win. Does that make sense? I expect the Avalanche to contend. I look at the Jets and I think they can win. Do you see the difference? Josh Morrissey is a good defenseman. I don't know if it's good news if he's your best one though, and I don't know if one defenseman fixes that. But I can see them making news in this news? Noise in this division. Why do I know the name Graham Skilleter after this game? Well, because he was the ref that Sheldon Keefe screamed at on national television. Listen, he was such a huge part of the end of the game story. Rightly or wrongly, okay? Like, I'm not even accusing him of anything. But for someone who was a big part of the end of that game, why can I not ask him questions? Like, why is he not available to the media? Why are officials not available to the media after a game? I'm not trying to shine a light in his face. I'm not trying to interrogate him. Just, how did you see it? Tell me how you saw it. Who officiates the officials when they do poorly? I hate being that kind of sports fan. I do. But that was a very poor showing by the third team on the ice. I get it. Paul, I don't know if you're going to like this, and a lot of Leaf fans aren't going to like this. Tough. Again, I don't want to be like this about this, but I've been making these videos for 14 years, right? This is my 14th season. How many times are we just like, oh, call the game properly? Stop, stop, stop waiting for refs to do it. Stop it. They're not going to call the way, they're not going to call the game the way you like it, certainly. And they're not going to call the game consistently game in and game out until the playoffs arrive and they consistently call nothing, which let's have an honest conversation here. This season has benefited the Leafs. The Leafs have actually, by my eyes, done better in games where nothing is called instead of games where lots of things are called, which is going to lose you some regular season games. But I think heading into the playoffs, it's actually a good thing. But as for who officiates the officials, I, I don't know what revolution you're waiting on here. It's not coming. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much would you like Jack Campbell to become our starting goalie? Okay, so this season changes real fast. Uh, they have that three-game performance against the Oilers. They were unbelievable, and I would say, yes, sell the entire farm. This is the year that they have to go for it. And they follow it up, naturally, so lethally, with their worst stretch of games of the season. Their worst. Losing games they deserve to lose. Losing games they deserve to win. Losing. Just losing. And most concerningly, losing games in which they had the lead, which is making people look at Freddy sideways. And yeah, you need a save from Freddy. Uh, my god. Like, if we're talking about going all in on this team, is that the guy? That's the goalie? Are you sure? Steve, don't blame the goalie. That's not what I said. Is this the guy? Answer the question. Yeah? Yeah, this is the one. You're real comfortable. You feel comfortable with this guy? This one. You sure? I, okay, I'll be honest, I'm not. So then, Laura's question, should Jack Campbell be the starter? Here's what sends a chill up my spine there, Laura. He's not here. He's hurt right now. He's out of the lineup with an injury. So Leaf fans are taking the starting position away from Frederick Anderson and anointing a hurt guy. Heading into the biggest go for it year the Leafs have had in decades. You're handing the starting job to a goaltender who has not only never been a team starting goaltender, but is currently hurt and you don't know how good he's going to be once he comes out of his hurt. You're starting to see the big, big problem here. My name's Steve, but what a lot of you don't know about me is my middle name is Concern. Hashtag free the Sandman. As long as we're talking about guys who aren't here, the Sandman, Rasmus Sandin. He's out dealing with, I believe it was a fractured foot from a shot block in his first game in the minors because uh, the hockey gods just hate the team that you cheer for. And why don't we have a little chit chat? I already made a video about Miko Lettinen uh, being traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets, and it's in the wake of Travis Dermott and Zach Bogosian as a pair and as individuals regressing. You never want to be the first guy the camera pans to after a goal, and Dermott has had that happen a few times recently, and it's not a recipe for success. And you would think, were he still available, that Miko Lettinen might even be playing tonight against the Sens. Oh boy. 
Oh boy, this better add up to something that makes sense, because right now it doesn't. I'm with Sheldon Keeve 100%, are you? I'm with him most percent, like, you know, stick up for your team, ask for calls that make sense, but at the end of the day, the Leafs could have still won that game, and he actively was like, you know what, I'm gonna put us down too, why not? I don't think that was his choice, he just blew his top, but like, you, you gotta keep your head. And then if you wanna yell at the officials, do it after the game! Imagine the Leafs come back and win this game, and then he gets to curse out Graham too! You get to have your cake and eat it too! That's the only thing I didn't like. It could have waited. Ah, Cody asking the right questions. What do you think Mo said to the ref after that super soft call in the neutral zone? All right, all right, Cody with the right question. And this is why Sheldon Keefe lost it, I think. Mo takes the interference penalty on Nikolai Ehlers, and then the Toronto Maple Leafs, probably with a lot of anger in their voice, are telling Graham what interference is. They're explaining the rules to a ref. They don't like that. Zach Hyman, off the face-off? Ah, you know what? I'm gonna further explain to these guys what interference is, because they didn't get the message last time. You see it in baseball a lot. Oh, oh, you, you're telling me balls and strikes now. All right, well, we'll see what balls and strikes are. You're telling me what interference is. All right, we're, we're gonna run a little drill on what interference is. And if you say, well, what? That makes it worse. That's an official's ego getting in the way of the game. I have bad news about humanity for you. Humans, look them up, Google them. It's not good, I know. Can we be nice to Keith? I still love the guy. We were all feeling what he said. Yeah, I mean, even if I don't 100% agree with it, I 100% agree with the feeling, and it's not like Sheldon Keefe really makes a habit of that. It's fine. Is Sheldon Keefe mad enough to dress Scott Sabarin right now? Yeah, so let me catch everyone up on what just happened to end the video. Scott Sabarin was sent down to the Toronto Marlies, and he made his Toronto Marlies debut. In his Toronto Marlies debut, he played exactly one shift that was 23 seconds long, and he took 17 penalty minutes. Two for goalie interference, ten for a game misconduct, five for fighting a guy who was not fighting him back. And he now has a one game suspension in the American Hockey League, but that doesn't matter because he was called up to the Leafs taxi squad. Basically, he went to the American Hockey League, wreck shop, and came right back. Oh, Richard Clune also got into a fight in that game. Uh, say what you want about the Toronto Marlies, but their prospects are, uh, safe. So, the Leafs next game is only in a few hours. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm sorry it's late, but daylight savings and all that. Every LFR this season has gotten over 40,000 views and if daylight savings time screws that up for me anyway that is it for this one thank you very much for watching click like if you like this video click subscribe if you really like it tell all your friends that the Leafs what should be a very mad Leafs team are playing the Ottawa Senators and they need to go into this four game break on a high